Hey guys, it's me Jessie from Just Peachy, and today's video I want to discuss uh, some books that I recently acquired. Some of them are from my school library, some of them are digital and from my library at home, some of them were gifted to me, and a few of them were uh, bought in bargain priced. So yeah, let's get started. Um, the first book that I got is Sophie Kinsella's Confessions of a Teen... I want to say teenage. That's not correct. Confessions of a Shopaholic. Um, Zoe from Red by Zoe. I think her last name is Zoe. I think her name's Zoe Hurt. But yeah, Zoe from Red by Zoe. Um, she's always raving about these... <laughs> Sorry, I'm checking my mirror to make sure that this is getting on camera. Um, Zoe from Red by Zoe. She's always recommending this book and other Sophie can Confel Sophie Kinsella's? Really? Um, and other Sophie Kinsella books. Um, and I saw this. Um, there's a building in on campus that has like this shelf, bookshelf uh, full of books that you can uh, borrow and bring back or you can trade out with another book you own. Um, I never have a book that I'm willing to trade at the time when I find, you know, treasures like this. So... I borrowed this with the intent of giving it back, even though I have another stuff you can sell a book I haven't read yet, 20s Girl, I believe, um, <laughs> that I have not returned yet. But I haven't read it yet, and I will return both of these when they are read, even if it, even I have to come back to campus for this after graduation. I will return them. And the next book I have is the second book in the Sword of Truth series, and that is Terry Goodkind's Stone of Tears. First, I watched the TV show that this book series was adapted into. Um, I've heard reports that it's not accurate to the book series, but this book series is like 12 plus novels long. So of course not. It's all, that show only got two seasons. Sad face. Um, and I read the first book. Um, this series follows Richard Cipher Rawl and his companions, uh, Kaelin and Nell and Zedekus Zul Zarender. Gee, which one of those is a wizard? I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, this is a chosen one trope, I guess you could say. Um, Richard, he uh, grows up normal um, on a, another part, body of land that is separated between the land of magic by this um, boundary that you have to cross and uh it's dangerous to cross anyway uh so yeah he grows up normal life thinking he's oh i'm a normal sir i'm a normal guy oh i'm a normal guy uh it is kind of weird that my father made me memorize this entire book um i don't remember the name of the book but yeah he had him memorize that book so that they could burn it in case it fell into the wrong hands and basically, Kaylin crosses the boundary and, um, and crud enfolds. Uh, basically, they have to cross the boundary into the magic land and help them liberate that land from a tyrant. Uh, Darken Roll. I think. Yeah, Darken Roll. Tyrant. So yeah, uh, I'm bad at synopses, as you can probably guess. So yeah, that's this book. One of my very kind uh, supervisors at work gave me a copy of this because he had two copies and he knew that I wanted to can you continue on with the series. So yeah, thank you Adam. Okay, next book. I've recorded this so many times I'm a little out of sorts. Next book I got from my library is You Don't Have to Say You Love Me by Sarah Manning. This is a book about a plus-size woman in LA I believe and uh, from what I've read, all of 18 pages, um, she is uncomfortable about her weight. Um, she believes she's not going to find the right guy or the right person uh, without losing weight. Um, and then she meets someone. I think they're supposed to be rich, important, or famous, or all three. Um, I request this from my library thinking that like, oh, um, I'm going to read this. I want to read this because it's plus size representation. But then I found out it is like 500 plus pages and I've kind of gotten over my uh, desire to read this 
maybe if I have a copy of my own, I would read it. So if hopefully I can find it for cheap, maybe I'll pick it up. But now I think it's just going to go back to the library when it's due. Bye. And the next two books that I got from our library are two graphic novels. The first of which is the Once and Future Queen opening moves. This is a Arthurian legend retelling. Um, it, it, it takes place... It, 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 it. It takes place in the 21st century uh, following Rainy Arturis. I believe she is a Muslim American and she's also a chess prodigy and while she is in Wales she stumbles across a cave in which the famous Excalibur is thrust into a stone and she manages to pull it out and adventures ensue. She's also accompanied with Merlin in a space astronaut <laughs> Merlin in an astronaut costume. This lovely lady is Guinevere, Gwen, and this sir is Lance, Lancelot. I don't know how they're gonna play out that uh, love triangle that Arthur, Lancelot, and Guinevere always have, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, and there's more to the story. There's this other realm with like dark fae and trolls and um, this dark elf master guy but the art is incredible like look at that oh and that's our big evil guy right here so yeah looking forward to that i'm about halfway through and i hope to enjoy it when i come to this volume's conclusion the next book i have is dc's comics bombshells volume three this takes place in world war ii and it follows um different cities um and various canon DC Comics uh, heroines, uh, including Wonder Woman, um, which actually, her story in this uh, kind of has a similar plot to Wonder Woman the movie, where she is growing up, where she is on Themyscira, and then Steve Trevor's plane crashes and has to rescue him, and then other stuff. Um, obviously, there's more characters than Wonder Woman. There's Supergirl, there's Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Cat, uh, that's Zatanna. Zatanna and uh, Catwoman. There's also Mera, who's I think the wife and companion to Aquaman. Aquaman's not really featured in there. But uh, basically in this, the Axis powers have made a deal with like this underworld guy who assists them by raising their dead corpses into a undead army. And crap unfolds <laughs> it's gotten pretty good this is the third volume um i'm a little slow right now in reading these so yeah <laughs> i can't wait and i'm so glad my library um has comic books which is great because i don't have time or mental capacity to be reading um to be reading full-blown novels at the pace that i'm going um for a library book like I wouldn't be able to finish it without having to return it. And the next two books I have are books that I um, got at Ollie's Bargain Outlet. The first I never heard of and this is Wanted Dead or Alive by Kim Brunner. Um, basically this is a I think it's a college student? No. Hang on. Think I think this may be a, about a high school student because it was talking about scholarship. But she is a, obsessed with the history and stories about Bonnie and Clyde. Um, and she, ha from what I've get, gotten from the details, um, she delves into a little bit of dark arts, maybe a little bit of magic, um, and accidentally summons the two spirits. And she and her friend get possessed. And I think it kind of turns her life upside down a little bit because, like, Bonnie and Clyde, criminals, possessing her, ruining her reputation, ruining her good uh, permanent record. Um, so I was really intrigued by this when I saw this and it was only three dollars so I'm like yes please. And the next book I got at Ollie's this was a very well talked about book on various YouTube channels. Um, Molly Lakovich really raves about this and it is And I Darken by Kirsten White. This is a retelling of Vlad the Impaler. It is a gender bent retelling. 
So instead of Vlad, it is Lada Dragvala. That's a W. I'm going to pronounce it like Molly does. Lada Dragvala. And it deals with um, feminism. Like, uh, Lada, she has to deal with, like, oh, she can't, oh, the guy's saying she can't rule because she's a woman. She can't be as strong, as, strong, as fierce, as brilliant as a man could in her that same role and she proves them wrong like she is badass mother in this I just swore I'm sorry sorry editor Jesse you're gonna have to cut that out this is a safe environment for children um I'm excited to read this uh I'm currently in the middle of three books right now so it could take me a while but I think this is one of the first books I'm gonna pick up um aside from the library books uh because I'm really excited about this I'm excited to get this stupid residue of the sticker off, but yeah, this was only like five bucks. Ollie's is great. I applaud them always. Dis disregard my video of how to not buy books. Ollie's is a place I get in trouble for because I will find so many books that aren't on my to be read list, but sound so great and I want to read them. And I gotta stop myself. They were like a stack this big of Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. Seriously, in Ollie's they were like six dollars. Holy canola oil. And they had the Percy Jackson and the Gods of Olympus and the Heroes of Olympus, those big uh, tabletop coffee table books that are awesome. They had those, a stack of them, and they were like ten dollars each. Whew. Yeah, I did not allow myself to buy them even though I'm probably gonna miss out on that deal because I don't have the space here in, in my college apartment and I don't have the space at my house in my bedroom in my parents house so I had to keep myself from buying them but oh my god I wanted them so badly <laughs> and the next three books I got were from my home uh, digital library and they were the three audiobooks in the of Poseidon series and the first book is of Poseidon, the second one is of Triton, and the third one is of Neptune. I've listened to and finished the first two books in the series, an audiobook. It's so enjoyable to read them, to listen to them, because um, I can listen to them while I'm doing the dishes, while I'm knitting, while I'm biking the class or work, while I'm in my two hour art studio class drawing naked bodies. Yes, that is happening that's on my Instagram link below um they're great I do know some people can't stand the voices in this particular series um audiobook because it's the one narrator but she but she does narrate and she does narrate all the characters and gives them certain voices sometimes she sounds like uh Melinda May from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. personally what is this book about uh this book it is about a girl, I guess she's chosen, not chosen one, but she grows up thinking she's a normal human being. Then an accident happens while she's on vacation. Her friend gets hurt. Um, and she also meets these two strangers. Um, crap happens, turns out these two strangers have a secret and they know that she is somewhat like them maybe of their species they're mermaids they call themselves sirena um and they walk and they're able to see as she's trying to help her friend that she can actually speak to uh animals of the ocean and of other water bodies um and so yeah that ensues i can't give too much away because i'm still thinking about the second book and that's a lot of story based off of what I'm still thinking about the second book and I know that would spoil the heck out of everyone. But yeah, it's about mermaids because <laughs> they call themselves something else. They don't, they're offended by mermaids. Um, they're offended when people call them mermaids, so don't call them mermaids. They're Sirena, but they're basically mermaids. They have fins. So yeah, I really recommend this, whether you're reading it phys with a physical book, with an ebook, listening to it on audiobook. I highly highly recommend this um i've always been into the mermaid lore mermaid stories 
look on my Goodreads, there's a list, a whole list about mermaids and sirens, and this one, uh, this one series is definitely in there. Um, it's a series I definitely want to buy eventually when I get my own place, when I have enough money to have a bookshelf and several books. <laughs> this is a series I will want to come back to one day. So yeah. Um, and that's all you have it. Uh, I'm sorry that this takes so long for me to upload. Setting up my camera, my phone, is really difficult. I have to delete every app on my phone in order to film a video that's more than three minutes long. Um, I also have to stick my iPhone on my clothing rack with like sticky tack that I use for posters. Um, figuring, and I also have a full length mirror behind this being set up by my bike that's in my room right now. It's just very difficult. Not to mention all the Premiere Pro crap that I deal with. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I love making these videos setup and editing aside. I love putting my thoughts out there. I want to get better at this. I want to be more critical and analytical about what I'm reading. I just love it. I also want to do some art videos. I hope you'd be interested in that. Um, if I can ever finish my sketchbook, I would love to do a sketchbook tour. I don't know how that will set up will go, but that's what I hope to do. Um, and I also want to draw fan art. That'd be really cool to have fan art shown and maybe drawn out while I'm discussing a video. So what do you think of that? I hope to get that um, done one day. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, a great morning, a great evening, a great afternoon.